and welcome to part three of this project to turn this jacket into hot anime merch. In part one I took you along with me while I was making my very first hand embroidered patch ever, which was this one right here. Then in the meantime I finished this one off camera. Last week I went through some more trial and error with these. And today I finally have the proper tutorial on how to hand embroider custom patches for you. So without further ado, let's get started with the materials you need. First of all, you need some more or less tightly woven rigid fabric. I have this white Lugana fabric that worked great because I could use the structure as orientation while embroidering, but it also frayed a lot. So be aware of that when you're choosing your base. Next up, are embroidery hoops. The size is depending on the size of your design, obviously, and for mine the 12 cm in diameter worked best. Then you need some needles. I guess any not so thick needles work, but real embroidery needles are actually great because they are blunt, so you won't hurt yourself with them so badly when you might poke your fingers. And the star of the show, embroidery thread. So these were the must-have materials, but there are some more that are nice to have because they'll make the whole thing a lot easier. First of all, embroidery stabilizer. I added those halfway through this project and they were a total game changer. They do what their name already gives away, they stabilize the embroidery during the process. They also help with keeping the fabric tight in the hoop. Another cool thing would be some fabric to back up your finished patch in the end. Iron-on adhesive is nice to have for sticking your finished patch to the backing fabric or to the jacket or the t-shirt or the hoodie or whatever you want to put it on later. Nice to have, but not necessary because sewing works just fine. And last but not least, thimble! Either to have a good grip on your needle or to prevent poking injuries like they did for me. Now on to transferring the design to the fabric. For the chest patch of my jacket, I choose the Yuyutsu Kaisen logo art. Put a piece of fabric into your embroidery hoop. Make sure that there's enough of it peeking out at the edges so you can pull it tight in between embroidering, but also not too much so you won't waste any fabric. Then put a light source behind the design and put the hoop onto the design with its back side up. Doing it this way makes the fabric lie flat on the design and simplifies the whole tracing process. You can totally use the window tracing trick, but I use my light box that I have because I'm a professional. <laughs> I use the pencil to trace, by the way, but you can use whatever shows best on the fabric. After transferring, I'm going to attach the stabilizer to the fabric by sewing it together with a loose stitch, just so it won't move around. Putting the fabric back into the hoop and now it's time to start stitching. To avoid tangling or threads that are too short to work with, a good technique is to measure yours to the length of your forearm. Embroidery thread is usually made out of thinner single threads. You can use the whole thing if you want, but for a detailed work like mine, two of these, in my case, six threads are more than enough. Thread, thread it through the needle. Wow. <laughs> thread it through the needle and tie a knot in the end. To outline the whole thing, I use a chain stitch. For this, you come up from behind the loop, hold the thread with one finger so it won't slip and go down through either the same hole you came up from or really, really close to it. Then come up from behind again, a little further away from your first stitch and through the loop that you created by holding it down. Repeat and you've got a stitch that kind of looks like a chain like the name says. If your design has smaller details that a chain stitch would be too thick for, you can always use the basic back stitch. Coming up from behind the hoop, go back closely to your first stitch, come up a little further again and go back and so on and so forth. First I did the frame and then the whole script with a chain stitch.
easiest part is done, people. On to filling this baby with white thread or the color that you choose. I'm using a classic satin stitch for this. Again, you come up from the back of the hoop and go to the next outline, just as you would while coloring in a space with crayons. Just keep in mind that you cannot go endless distances with this stitch, so better break it up into sections. I decided to go vertically here because the length from left to right would have been way too long and I didn't want to break it up. The vertical stitches were just the right length. This step needs patience, you guys. Don't give up and don't get lazy because this will definitely show in the results. Nothing good comes out of rushing things, so take your time. I think it took me solid eight hours to fill the entire thing, just so you know what is realistic. <laughs> Yeah, now you might think that you're done, but look, if you want this thing to be cool, and I mean super f cool, you go over the details again. <laughs> I know, I know, but hang on. The script that I did before with the chain stitch served great as an orientation to me while filling it up, but it wasn't the end of it all. Now I go over it again with a mix of backstitch and really short satin stitches, depending on the streamline of the white thread. Here you can see the comparison between the rework details and the finished but not really finished thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, you get it, right? This one looks just so much neater. I did the rest of the script off camera, but here's the finished thing. I also set and stitched over the frame again just to make it more or less even. You can totally stop here and call it a day, but for the others who want to take it a little further, it's time to put on the backing fabric. This doesn't have to be anything special, just another unelastic piece of fabric. I stick the two together with some iron-on adhesive so it won't move, and then I sew around it again to secure it one last time. Okay, last thing to do, cut it out and put it onto whatever you want to put it on. <laughs> I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Hit me up in the comments if you have any further questions. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Check out my Etsy shop, take my Skillshare classes, and while you're at it, just promise me your firstborn child also. Nah, just kidding, but for real. All the relevant links are in the description box down below. Oh, and subscribe, obviously. Okay, see you next week, bye.